I took to uh, Twitter to complain about something, Mikey. And today I went to McDonald's and I bought a McDouble. And after I was eating it, I was like, this is a little thin. I opened it up and they make singled me, man. They only put wait, one patty in. Wait, wait. You ordered McDouble and they make singled you. They make singled me. Listen, how am I supposed to my fitness pal that? Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Search for Awesome podcast. I am Titus. And I'm Mikey. This week on the podcast, we're talking about the Search for Awesome podcast moving. Apple's expensive HomePod is damaging wood furniture. Google just found a bug in Microsoft Edge. We're also going to be talking about two of our favorite podcasts and some more honorable mentions. It's a really exciting topic. Uh, Titus also got a new gadget he wants to fly. feel like that's my life story. And we're going to answer some of your comments and questions. Let's go. You don't you don't sound bitter at all, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, I mean, I just feel like you get to get the cooler gadgets. And I'm over here like, hey, hey, friend. Well, you have uh, these things called children, and that doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, please don't. They are bundles me. of joy. I love my children. And I love that my money goes to them and not buying cool, expensive things. It's It's great. <laughs> all right guys first things first uh we have moved the search for awesome podcasts to its own channel as you have already noticed um at first i kind of thought the podcast would be right up the alley of the search for awesome channel so i've been just uploading them on that channel and although it's done pretty well over there i me and mikey both agree it's probably going to do best on its own channel so we now have it on the search for awesome podcast channel it seems to make more sense for it to live on its own and breathe on its own and then we'll we'll definitely do some you know cross promotion between the two but uh there's also going to be excerpts from the podcast every single day of the week on the search for awesome podcast channel um but here's the thing you don't need to worry about getting notifications every single day of the week of new excerpts we will only be sending out notifications when there is a new episode of the podcast if there is a bonus episode mikey we might be talking about a bonus episode sometime really soon oh, yeah. um and also, uh, if there's just a special something that we want you to see, that's the only time you're going to receive notifications. So if you do enjoy the podcast, please hit subscribe, and uh, we'll be having lots of stuff coming out on this channel. I definitely think this has got a bright future ahead of it. It's a really fun podcast, and I'm glad you guys are coming along with us. When we originally started the podcast, Titus explained this whole, you know, the Search for War channel and the Search for Awesome and what would be different. And I thought for certain I understood what was going on. And I thought the podcast was only going on the second channel. And then he did it differently. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess he's in charge. He's got this. Let him do his thing. And then now he's like, oh, I don't like the way it's done. And I'm like, well, maybe if you would have done it the way that you originally designed, <laughs> we wouldn't have this problem. Maybe if you'd listen to me when I talked, you could have put your foot down, Mikey. That's what this is really about. <laughs> No, the design, the original design was is that there were going to be excerpts on the search for more on the regular podcast on the search for awesome. That was what I maybe I didn't explain that well, but uh, now we're going to put it all in the search for more. But it's going to be called the search for awesome. Now, don't worry, it all makes sense as we move forward. I feel good about this direction, and uh, and honestly, it's probably the direction we should have been doing from the beginning. Uh, but anyway, and also I never really explained it that much. I just kind of started throwing the podcast up, so that was kind of on me. But anyway, let's jump into the news. Uh, first up for the news, Apple, uh, new home pod is leaving white rings on wood surfaces. So Apple just started selling the smart speaker. It's a competitor to the Amazon echo dot and, uh, the Google home and all these other things. And people have been putting it on their wood furniture and they're finding after a couple of days or whatever, they pick it up and there's white rings where the Apple home pod was. Now, some people are suggesting that Apple knew about this when they, uh, you know, sent out the home pods and we're selling them. I can't imagine that is true. Do you honestly think that like Apple would sell this if they knew that it was going to damage people's furniture, Mikey? I, I feel like the more important question is how could they not have, I mean, did they not test this? Did they not test it in different environments? I mean, they know that their mesh grill goes around towards the bottom of that. Why would they not test that to see if there was any effects on different types of surfaces? I don't know what kind of testing they did or didn't do, but why would they not test that? That doesn't make much sense to me. 
Yeah, and this gets into so many conversations. There's two different things that I, I'm wondering right here. Um, so first off, this is kind of what I don't like about companies, especially like the direction Apple's been going, because Apple used to be a much more simple company. So if you go back in the day before Steve Jobs came back and, and got Apple's, so basically they were about ready to go bankrupt. They had so many products. They had hundreds of different versions of computers. They had smaller teams. I mean, it was just chaos. There was too much going on. And Steve Jobs came in there and he was like, we're only going to be selling a handful of products and we're going to get those products right. And we're going to do them really well. But as time has gone on and Steve Jobs has been gone for a long time now, they've been adding more and more stuff to their product line. And it it doesn't shock me that something like this has slipped through the cracks. Even though they have massive teams, they have Buka money. It's just when a company is focusing on so many different things and so many different things in their vision, it's hard to keep your eye on every single ball that they're trying to bounce. And I think something like this was inevitable. This isn't the biggest deal in the world, but I uh, I don't know. I, I think about Samsung too. They they actually make more stuff than Apple does. They make like dishwashers and washing machines. And that's one of the reasons why I don't, and again, I don't want to say anything about Samsung because I do know they make great stuff, but I personally don't buy their products like that because I worry that they're stretching themselves too thin. If they're focusing on too much stuff, they're going to mess some things up. And we've seen that happen in the past with Samsung, especially with the notes that started having big problems that people had to do returns and stuff like that. I don't know. What do you what do you get think about this, Mikey? Like about companies stretching themselves? I, I kind of feel the same way you do. For me, one of the bigger problems here was their response. Um, because I, I feel like like you said, you know, I, you start doing more products, things are gonna slip through. They can't they can't catch every single thing. You know, if they only had four products they're releasing and something like this slipped through, you know, that's a huge disappointment, right? Because that tells me a lot about their company. But when you start having a lot of different products and a lot of different genres and some, uh, quite a few new areas, um, you're going to have things slip through. Yeah. Uh, this is a new venture for them, having a speaker like that. For me, though, the response was the problem. When their response was to tell people that maybe they should just put a coaster underneath it, um, I don't know whether that was official from them or not, but that's what I'm reading everywhere I look. Is that really? they're saying? I did not read that. I did not see the response. I read it like from like four different places. Uh, I cannot huh, remember off the top bad. of my head. I'd have to look. But if that is truly their response, which I'm hoping that's just what people are saying, if that's truly their response, it's kind of a poor response in my my opinion. Uh, that's not fixing anything. That's not admitting fault or anything like that. That's just saying, oh, it's your problem now. Here's how you can deal with it. And I don't, I don't know. I don't. I feel like when you're paying that premium amount for a company like apple you deserve better than that that's why you pay for apple versus buying a cheaper product yeah that's interesting i had not heard that but i i'd only like read a, you know a couple paragraphs here and there about this whole thing and uh maybe apple thought that their home pod would be so good that no one would ever move it to even notice the ring you know it's just like why would you permanently there you know maybe that's is that maybe no <laughs> No, I mean, I yeah, I don't know. Like, they are a pretty cocky company, so it's not unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, but you know, <laughs> I'd hope they would be that cocky. <laughs> That's pretty bad. No, no definitely <laughs> not. I mean, I don't know. It's just like they had to have known. I going back to your statement of of whether they may have known your question rather of whether they knew or not. I I feel like they had to have known. They had to test it on different sur surfaces to check if the sound quality sounded great. So how did they not know this was going to happen? Yeah, I don't know. And maybe maybe the teams that were worried about the sound weren't worried about that particular piece. I know at my company, if if it's not my job, it's not my problem a lot of times. Sorry, I'm not speaking for myself, of course. I'm speaking for the other people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, but that is a lot of times you see a problem and you just kind of look away because it's like that's not my responsibility. But again, that's what happens when you have a company that does so many different things yeah. is a lot of things are going to get swept under the rug. And I've heard many people complain about uh, Apple's quality control is a little bit down. Um, you know, their laptops sometimes have issues that they wouldn't have had in the past and they keep trying to innovate and, and have different features. And, and I've heard people disappointed with iPhones or disappointed with all kinds of stuff from Apple that where you would just like, normally like, they were rock solid polished. It doesn't surprise me that this, they missed the ball here, but at the same time, I, I think, um, I don't know. I, I think uh, obviously they need to do something other than say, this is your problem. I did read somewhere, and I don't know if this was their official statement, kind of like what you just said, 
Um, they're supposed to be retooling and fixing the issue. Somebody suggested they might put silicone at the bottom or something. So maybe they just mentioned the coaster thing just to say, hey, here's what you can do for now until we can figure out how we want to handle this. Either way, it's disappointing, man. I feel like considering when you add that, that it's the same price as like buying the Google Max. Yeah. You know, which is Google's high end speaker i don't know i I feel, I feel like it's kind of disappointing i feel like i shouldn't have issues with it i, I think it's also not just that i think um i think sometimes apple just uses different materials than other companies they're just driving themselves and perhaps this was one of those times where they were using material that wasn't really tested for what they're using it for and that's how this happened but who knows i mean there's a lot of things that could happen here but um I guess the other thing I'm wondering is like, are they liable for this? Like, are they going to have to repair people's furniture? Are they going to have to have? I'm sure there'll be a lawsuit about this because Apple gets sued for everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I'm it doesn't sure matter. Got to be reliable for it. I mean, this this is not something that was a warning uh, when this product was sold. So yeah, I, I furniture is not cheap. Fully liable. I mean, I could see somebody's like five thousand dollar antique china cabinet being ruined because of this. And yeah. I mean, what are they supposed to do then? Anyway, we'll see uh, what happens with it, but uh, you know, I hope hope Apple will learn a lesson here and either simplify or get a better department for making sure that these kind of things are checked. But uh, next thing up, uh, Google found a uh, Microsoft Egg Edge bug. Um, I don't know why, but I really just cannot get enough of tech company dra- uh, drama. Like I, when I see like drama on YouTube and stuff like that, that doesn't really appeal to me. But something about when a tech company is after another tech company, like I just love it. I just can't get enough of it. It's like the most fascinating thing in the world to me. I just, I guess I'm just a nerd. But this isn't exactly that. This is something a little different. So basically, uh, and I'll put a link in the description uh, of this video. But there was a bug that was found that could allow uh, somebody to put malicious code into somebody's RAM through a uh, vulnerability in Microsoft Edge. I don't know much more than that. So that's not exactly what I found interesting about it. It wasn't the bug. It was how it came about. So Project Zero is a Google company that finds bugs in other people or in other companies' code. And if the company doesn't do anything about it, they go public and they shame that company for basically not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And this is what happened. They found a bug in Microsoft Edge three months ago. They alerted Microsoft. They didn't fix it. And Project Zero from Google uh, went public. I just find this really fascinating to me. And obviously, Microsoft is not going to like this. I have read that Microsoft has in the past has been very vocal that they don't like how Project Zero does things. Or maybe there was something in the past that they did that they didn't agree with. I, I find this really interesting uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I for those of you who don't know, uh, my full-time job, I'm a web developer. So I have a little bit of bitterness towards Internet Explorer, which is a Microsoft product. And because of that bitterness, like anytime I'm making a web page or whatever, I always have to struggle because we have to make sure it works on Microsoft Internet Explorer, which is their old version of a browser. They don't even technically support that anymore, but we still have to make sure it works on it. And I hate it so much. Edge is better, but because of Microsoft Internet Explorer, whatever, I kind of don't like Microsoft's anything to do with the internet. <laughs> like, uh, but So I don't use Edge just kind of out of principle because of how bad Internet Explorer is. Another thing that annoys me is when I'm on my Windows 10 computer, you tell me if your computer does this. Anytime I open like Firefox or Chrome, something will pop up on my Windows desktop that says Edge is you know 30% faster than my Google Chrome or has 30% less vulnerabilities. It used to happen to me. I'm not sure if I did something or why it stopped, but it did stop eventually for me, and it was the greatest moment. I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't even know how good Edge is or is not. I couldn't tell you because I feel like they made so many mistakes with Internet Explorer and then they com- constantly would kind of like deny it or brush it under the rug or treat it like it wasn't that big of a deal. And then yeah. they just out of nowhere came out with Edge and like we were supposed to be like, ooh and ah and be all excited. But I don't, I didn't feel that excitement. I was already moved on to Chrome and used, well, first I moved on to Firefox and I mo- used Firefox for quite a long time. And then I tried out Chrome and I fell in love with Chrome. But I just, I have no desire to go back to Edge to try Microsoft's new product that I feel like it's just kind of like a rebranded version of Internet Explorer. I uh, I found this really interesting because I know Microsoft is trying to get Edge to have more of the market share, and it clearly isn't. Um, Chrome seems to have the bulk of the market share right now, 
And uh, I just I find the whole thing just really interesting. I, I, we'll see what Microsoft has to say about this and Project Zero. What do you think about Project Zero, by the way? That's, that's the other thing I want to talk about. I haven't read a whole lot about it, but I've always, when they first started talking about it uh, a while back, um, I was really kind of excited about it because one of the biggest things that I love about Google that I can't stand about most other companies is Google, most of their stuff is open source. But when you mm-hmm. talk about Microsoft and stuff, it's not. It's licensed software. Um, which isn't that big of a deal. The problem is, is when, you know, if you have a problem and you report that to Google, it's a public uh, issue, right? So like, and they, they have to fix that because it's, it's made aware to the public. When you submit that, that bug report, I mean, the public can go and view that, but that's not the case with Internet Explorer. I mean, you can go and post in a forum about it, but that doesn't, what they're doing about it doesn't have to be public what they're doing or not doing. I thought that was kind of interesting the way they're kind of forcing these companies to be more transparent. You know, this Mm -hmm. is your issue. What are you doing about it? And if you're not going to do anything about it, we're going to let the public know because otherwise you would have no clue whether they're actually working on it or not. They'll just release another update that says bug fixes and patches and that's it. And you have no idea if the thing that you found is fixed or not. I I am kind of have mixed feelings about Project Zero. I think it's a good concept. But it's kind of one of those things that, like, what gives them the right? But I guess what gives them the right is they found the problem. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, I don't know. It, it does feel a little elitist. Uh, but at the same time, I think as a whole, it's making the tech community more accountable. And if you think about all the software out there that gets old and gets outdated and the developers just stop developing for it, yet it's still a used product. Like, for instance, like Windows XP from way back when and that kind of stuff. And, like, still tons of machines still use those products. Like, you know, it's good to get the word out that, hey, you should not be using this anymore because... They are not supporting it, and there are some clear problems. So uh, I, I find it interesting, although I could imagine how annoyed I'd be as a company if you know my name was being sullied because I didn't want to support something for you know for the rest of until the end of time, you know, or whatever. But in this case, this is Microsoft Edge. This is a big deal, and I'm I not don't know why they took why it took them over ninety days to actually deal with the issue. Who knows? Well, I mean, I think there's another perspective here. I don't think it's just them making them look bad. It's letting people know and letting them be aware because if yeah. they're not doing anything about it, that means they're also not letting their customers know that this is an issue. So you would have no way of knowing. So especially when you talk about some of this legacy software that people are still using, um, mm-hmm. it gives them opportunity to find out, okay, this is a problem because you may not know and you may want to stop using that software if you knew that. But without them True. giving you that heads up, you would have no clue. Um, now I guess I was trying to figure out how they make money and I think it's from the bounties because a lot of these companies have bounties if you find errors in their, their code, but I really have no idea. I, I could just be almost like a nonprofit that Google supports. I really don't know, but I, I find it really interesting. It really interesting. I'm not sure what Google's motive is here to run this thing, but I, I am glad it's here, I, I think, uh, but it is... It's cool. You know, it, it does seem like out of the kindness of their heart towards the community. Maybe it's PR. Maybe they just want to have be known as that company that's willing to spend money to help, uh, you know, other companies and help the population as a whole. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a neat thing. So we'll see what Microsoft has to say about Google. And uh, if there's anything else to talk about next week uh, about that, we will be sure to do that. So, uh, yeah. We'll keep you posted. All right, so but now for the meat of the episode, we're talking about our very favorite podcast. Last week, we talked about a couple of our, like, you know, high list podcasts. These are our two absolute favorite podcasts, and we have a lot to say about these. So we want to give the bulk of the show to these podcasts because they deserve it. They are awesome podcasts, uh, and uh, I definitely think that we're going to get out of we're going to keep out of spoilers like we did last week but i definitely think um uh these are definitely worth talking about so mikey you have the first podcast what would you what is your favorite podcast i'd have to say the message there was just something about it so when i first asked you for a list of different podcasts to watch um this was one of the ones that was on top of the list it sounded interesting i thought i would check it out listening to the first episode left me with a lot of questions uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I started asking you questions through message and you were very cryptic with your answers and wouldn't really tell me a whole lot. And I had no clue why. But after finishing it, I fully realized why, because I feel like you were in the same boat I was in. When you're listening to it, it sounds like real life. Like, yeah, it's it's so, so captivating. And even even when you you get to a certain point 
you know, episode, like I'd say about like three or four episodes in that you realize it's not real life, but you yet still sometimes feel like it is. I don't know how else to describe it. Like the world of the message, it, it just kind of brings you in and makes you want to believe it, I guess. I don't know. You look at me like I'm crazy. What do you think? No, no. I just wanted to comment uh, about this because I, well, because I think you asked me like, you know, is this real or something like that? And like when I first listened to this, I don't even know how I came across it. And I started listening to one of them. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And uh, and basically the premise is they found a message from space many years ago. And, and this is actually a fictional podcast. This is not a real thing. But when I was first listening to it, I thought that like this sounds like real life but i feel like i would have heard about this message from space and they're like investigating it and all this stuff and there was anyway there's just this uh, so many moments that were just like oh my gosh what is going on and finally i started googling like crazy i'm trying to figure out is this real life like this is you know and I, i was right in your boat where i was just like i don't know what's going on but it's basically like netflix but in audio form it's just a bingeable audio fictional podcast about an alien message from space now, now let me be clear here, because it may have sound like we just spoiled the whole podcast. There's a lot to the story um, that unfolds that'll blow you away um, that we have not included. That was the all. first episode. Yeah. That was like, we didn't spoil nothing. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Wait till you get to the end of it. It'll, I don't know. It it blew me away the, end, the way they ended it. I thought it was I'm trying to think of how to express it without giving it away. It was a satisf- satisfying ending. That's what I'll say. It was very satisfying, in my opinion. Yeah, and the way it's told is a documentary style, which is one reason why I think why we thought it was so real, because it, it was basically from the perspective of one person, and they're basically talking about their experiences with this message. And, and the other weird thing about it is it's like a... The way... It, it's so hard to even explain, because it, the way it's done, and again, this is no spoilers, I don't think, um, is... You're listening to a podcast from this fictional world, but it's a podcast about the fictional world. It's weird. Like it's like you're listening to a real podcast in this fictional world. And yeah. everything you hear is from this fictional podcast inside that world. And that's one reason why we thought it was so real. And we're hearing it all from the perspective of this one person who's experiencing these crazy things coming from this message. It gets serious really fast. Um, and you're just like I'll be honest, it's it's kind of funny. I sent uh, my mother-in-law is really into audiobooks and I sent her this one and another one that we're going to talk about in a second. Um and I was like, you need to listen to this. If you like audiobooks, you're going to love this cuz this is like an audiobook on steroids cuz it's like you have the sound effects, you have different actors. I mean, it really is like a high-quality Netflix style audio drama and it's so good. Again, we can't really dive too deep into it without really spoiling it, but just know that it gets serious. It's only like, how many episodes did it, Mikey? Do you know? I want to say like seven or something like that. It's not very much. Six or seven. Yeah, it's not that much. So it's definitely worth a binge for sure. And I mean, honestly, once you start listening to it, you're not going to be able to stop. I don't think. At least I wasn't. And uh, the only thing I will say is for this one especially, I wouldn't listen to it while you work because it's really hard to listen to while you work because it sucks you in. But what's cool is these people who made the message, which is your favorite podcast, also made Life After, which of the t- uh, which is also like this as an audio drama. It's really good. And personally, I like Life After better than the message, but they're both incredible. Now, now I will say with Life After, I definitely, I definitely really enjoy that one as well. It's definitely one of my favorites. So I, I will say the only reason I feel like the message goes above that for me is the fact that it felt so real and and that's what kind of led me yeah, into true. being able to enjoy the life after wasn't it the same creators as well that yes did both? Like, so it's the same group of people or the same podcasting company that made both but i'll say life after is also a, it's not so it's not told as like a podcast and a podcast it's you just it's like you're just listening in on a story but what happens in it really feels right like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like so out there because it's about a social media company it's kind of crazy and it kind of tells you the story of what happens what could happen if a tech company that knows basically everything about you and has so much data from you could do 
and and how they could use that power improperly. And it's uh, it's clearly a fictional podcast. So so I'd like to say based off of you know uh, the the companies we have today, you know we have several companies that are collecting data from us. I don't think that. When you're, when you're listening to this, it's almost like you kind of want it to be real, but then partially don't because you fear that this is something that could be in our future. I, I, it's, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting story. You really kind of, you become involved uh, with a character and really have a lot of emotion about the things that he's going through and experiencing and, you know, the conversations that he's having um, when he gets into tricky situations, you know, you really get concerned for him. It's, it's like and really in-depth show uh, just for your ears. I don't know. It's kind of magical. Yeah, and one thing I will say about it is it doesn't feel forced. No, Sometimes when you're watching a TV show, you're like, you can kind of feel the click, you can hear the click-clack of the keyboard of the writers because you can tell, well, they needed this happen, so this would happen. The writing and, like, the path and, like, the trajectory of the show, it just feels right. But not to say it, it like it takes it into crazy directions, but it feels earned. It feels like, okay, that crazy thing just happened. But if I was in that guy's shoes, experiencing the exact same things he's experiencing, I would be very tempted to do exactly what he's doing. And he's basically forced to be doing crazy things because he's somebody who's got nothing left to lose. And uh, and this tech company basically is manipulating him for their benefit. And it's it's insane. It's definitely one of my favorite podcasts also i think it had a a solid ending as well no i i have to agree with that when you're when you're listening to it there will be twists and turns that really shock you but not in the sense of wait why did why did that happen it's more of like that shocking like oh wow he actually did it okay yeah okay i saw that coming uh it makes a lot of sense you know you never had that moment where you're like wait why did they why did they write it this way I don't know. I never had that moment of confusion and worry of like, what are they doing to the script? It it all seemed to continue to flow throughout the entirety of the story all the way to the very end. Yeah, I, I definitely felt like the writers and the acting and everything was so top notch that I felt like it was in good hands. Like this was going to be a great story and I wasn't disappointed. I was blown away by the story and I thought it was fantastic. So the message is Mikey's favorite podcast and Life After is another great one. Um, it's on the same podcasting channel. So you can start out with a message and you can just keep going and listen to Life After as well. So I definitely recommend it if it all interests you. Just listen to one episode. Trust me, like if it doesn't suck you in, like while you're exercising or something, if it doesn't suck you in, I'll, I'll be shocked on your commute or something like that. Just pop it in there and just give it a shot. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Honestly, all I wanted from that podcast after it was done, or both podcasts after they're done, was more. Oh, and with that, I can't remember exactly, but I will say that I believe that both The Message and Life After um, have some graphical language, and I believe The Life After has some subject suggestive scenes um but i don't i don't quite remember off the top of my head so maybe just be on the lookout for that yeah definitely I, either way i think the themes are to adult for kids so yeah i would avoid them with a little one so all right so let's talk about my favorite podcast um life after is definitely like right at the very forefront but my very favorite podcast and it's my favorite for a long time is reply all that it's my favorite show mikey I know I sent you reply all. Have you ever listened to an episode? So I listened to I think three episodes from them. Um, I like their style. I like their format. For me, it's just I had a hard time getting into some of the stories that they had. Um, really, that shocks me. Well, I think I just I think I maybe didn't pick some of the best episodes. What one thing I will recommend if you listen to reply all, if you come across an episode that you don't necessarily vibe with move on to another one. Uh, Cause there's plenty of great episodes in there. There's, there's a lot of content, but right. not all of them are going to apply to you. This is not one of those podcasts. It's not like the message of life after where you need to listen to every single episode in order. Um, it, you know, it's not every episode is going to apply to you. Uh, so definitely feel free to move on and try a different episode. Yeah, and so that I'd absolutely agree with that. But uh, the Reply All is a show about the internet, and so basically they just find stories from the internet that they find fascinating or interesting or what have you. It's hosted by PJ Vote and Alex Goldman, 
Um, and basically, they just find cool, interesting stories that are based, at least in some ways, in the internet. And to me, it takes me on some fascinating journeys. Um, and I'll be honest, yeah, you're absolutely right, Mikey. There are definitely hit and miss, and, and I will talk about a couple episodes I would recommend avoiding. But I think one of the things I like about it is it's so consistent. Even if I listen to a bad episode, you can tell like they spent a lot of time on it. It's super top-notch. Their storytelling skills are really good. It's still compelling, and I still enjoy it. Uh, but what happens is occasionally they just hit like a home run, and it's just like an episode that just blows my mind and expo- it exposes me to something that I never knew I wanted to know about. And... Uh, and, and that's kind of the nature of it. They're, you're trying to unearth things that you've never heard of before and things that are prominent but, you know, just are totally out of the norm. So my very favorite episode is uh, Alex Goldman, one of their hosts, uh, actually tries to talk to one of the companies that try to scam people in India. Now, you've probably got one of these calls before, like cleaning their Microsoft or whatever, that you have a virus on your computer. And he basically literally pesters these guys for months. He gets a hold of like their phone number to their support center, and they, he just calls them all the time, just trying to get an interview. He just wants to know why they do what they do, how successful they are, and whatever. Like He's just trying to understand this service, or it's not really service, this scam, uh, and, and just to see, like, just to learn something about something that, like, you know, I'd never thought I wanted to know about, but it's like, yeah, why do they do that? Like, why do they try to scam people out of their money? Um, that one is insane. It's my favorite episode, and it and this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna spoil like the big themes, but it uh, it involves him flying to India to actually have a face to face meeting with some of the people who run one of these companies, and I mean, just blew my mind incredible episode i will have a link to all of the episodes i describe in the description there's another one about a lady that has some sort of ailment and she keeps going to different doctors and no doctors can help her and it's basically like this really frustrating thing where she has this problem and these doctors are like i don't see any problems on my end you know you look fine to me but she's like i you know i need help like there is a serious problem so she goes to this website uh and basically she puts a bounty it's like a website where you basically you say I will give this much money to anyone who can help me figure out what's wrong with me. She puts the bounty, she tells her symptoms, and people give in, basically tell her what they think it might be. They do all this research and all this stuff, and they try to help this person. And there's a satisfying ending to the end of that one especially. It is a bit, a bit of a cliffhanger too, so it's an incredible episode. There's another one where they investigate if, space, if Facebook is using your mic to listen to conversations on your phone. Uh, because the ads were getting so creepy that people were like, how could Facebook know that I was going to go visit my mom and all of a sudden I'm getting ads for flowers? You know, like they have to, there's got to be something extra here. And basically they start investigating to see is Facebook obtaining information from you maliciously in a way that they say that they're not. And many people have accused Facebook of using uh, the mic on your phone to listen in and, and, and uh, from there you getting served ads that are just super creepy. They also have a few segments that they do along with the regular episodes. One's called Super Tech Support. It's basically someone has this crazy tech support problem, not like a normal tech support problem, Mikey, that you might get where they're like, I can't install Windows or my computer hard drive is too full. No, this is like people who have like serious tech problems. There was a guy who their house... Something to do with GPS would like would uh, basically uh, when somebody was trying to find their phone, it would say that it was at their house, and it was not just one person. It was tons of people would just show up at their house and say, "Hey, uh, it says my phone is in your house," and <laughs> they even had somebody who literally came to their house and like they started like threatening them like where's my friend where's my friend like they're like it was serious like their friend had been kidnapped or something they're trying oh to locate God. him and yeah isn't it crazy that and they're ridiculous. having to f- help this guy and this i think it was a couple figure out what is going on why are all these phones reporting that their gps is at their house and uh, so they end up getting involved with that and they do end up uh, figuring out some really interesting stuff about that they also have another story someone bought bitcoin back in the day when it was really cheap they spent some of it and they couldn't find the Bitcoin they had left. And they couldn't remember how much they had. Um, but they know, as you know now, Bitcoin's like super, super valuable, like over $10,000 of Bitcoin. And they were like trying to track this stuff down because even if it's part of a Bitcoin, that's a lot of money. 
And so they basically help them figure that out. All the episodes I'm talking about are linked below in the description. One thing I will say about this podcast is it's definitely an adult podcast. Um, there is mention of drugs in many stories and language and other things. And it, there's a lot of stuff that isn't appropriate. In fact, I will recommend a few episodes not to listen to. The most recent one, Trust the Process, uh, definitely avoid that one. That one got really weird at the very beginning. I don't even want to get into it. Sometimes reply goes a little too far. I will be honest. Another one's called World Star, and it's about a website called World Star Hip Hop. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but in my opinion, bad site. Didn't need a story about it, and uh, I would uh, go away from that one. I'm sure there are other ones you should avoid. But like Mikey said earlier, if you're not filling the episode or if it gets a little too inappropriate or out there, I would skip it. Fun fact, Mikey. Uh, before I started the search for awesome, um, I got an email or I actually emailed Alex Goldman, the host, one of the hosts of reply all. And I actually asked him a nerdy question about microphones. And within 24 hours, he actually responded. Oh, I thought wow. it was like the coolest. Yeah. He was like host of like a really awesome podcast and like a really popular one at that. And he actually took the time to actually answer my email. And I was just asking him like what microphone they used. That was it. <laughs> oh, wow. Cause I, cause I always love their uh, audio quality and guess what mic they use Mikey. Which one? Do you know? The one, remember that one I said last week that was like the SM7B, the one that like everyone uses, they yeah. use that. Yeah. <laughs> so, only a 4000 was it 4000 or $5,000 microphone? Uh, no, that was only 400 Oh, 400 <laughs> So you can get a couple of them at that price. Yeah. That's I like, mean, if he wants to plug our podcast, I mean, I guess I wouldn't be bothered by it, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it would kind of annoy me, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try to wrap up this podcast soon because uh, this podcast is going to come out with bonus episodes so we were talking about serial and up and vanish last week and one of the things that's really hard to talk about those podcasts without really talking about spoilers and stuff so we we're like let's just do bonus episodes where we just do spoilers we just talk about every little thing so after you listen to those or if you know if you have listened to them before or whatever you can pop over and watch or listen to our bonus episodes on each of these we're just going to talk about our thoughts on the cases do we think that these i'm trying not to spoil it right now <laughs> like <laughs> Do we think that? No. Well, uh, well, let's say this. If you're going to listen to these, either have already listened to the podcast in its entirety or have no intention of listening to it, do not listen to this and then contact us saying, hey, you guys ruined the whole podcast for me because I was only halfway through. This is definitely a full intensive spoiler alert. Like you, you cannot go into this thinking that you'll be safe. You will not be safe if you're not looking for the all the information, basically, because we're going to talk about it all. Right. So we talked about Serial and Up and Vanish last week, and uh, we have bonus episodes. Uh, we're going to be doing Serial. Uh, hopefully the day after this one comes out, the bonus episode will come out, um, and then Up and Vanish should follow shortly thereafter. So uh, and we're just going to have an in-depth discussion because... It's really not fun watch, or it's really not. I keep saying watching. You don't watch podcasts, Titus. It's not really fun <laughs> listening to podcasts and not being able to talk to somebody about it. That's one of the things, like why I was trying to get Mikey into podcasts because I, I like, you know, it's fun to talk about it and like, you know, give your ideas and get their ideas and like, do you think they did it or whatever? You know, it's it's fun. So we're gonna be doing total spoiler episodes where basically we just discuss it and then you can discuss it with us in the comments. I will say. Um... I feel like that was something that was kind of frustrating for you because uh, most of them, when I was listening to him, he had already finished, uh, especially for like Serial. He had already finished all of that one. So I'm like four episodes in and I'm like trying to talk to him about stuff. And he's like, mm, yep. Oh, OK. Uh huh. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's trying not to ruin it for me. But at the same time, it's like driving him crazy. You could tell in his voice. And he's like, <laughs> would you just finish it already so I could talk to you about it? Uh, see, that's is so frustrating to talk to somebody. Like, he wants to discuss episode four, an episode I barely remember, and I know everything that came from that. I can't discuss something when I know what happens. Well, like, well especially with I, a podcast like Serial, from, from, four, from episode four to, like, episode eight, like, so much changes, so much more information comes out between then. So by the time you get to the end, I mean, you know about a billion more things than you did from episode episode four. So it's hard to talk to somebody yeah. about that without accidentally leaking other information. That's exactly why I didn't want to talk to you about it because I just knew that I was going to say something that you didn't know. And, uh, and I think I even accidentally spoiled a couple of things for you. Yeah. Uh, just, you just try not to, but, but uh, you know, you somehow squeeze it out of me, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm good at that. Or I just, 
or I just volunteered it. Um, so subscribe so you guys don't miss those bonus episodes. Uh, they will be coming out shortly. So hopefully tomorrow will be uh, Serial, and then shortly thereafter will be Up and Vanish. Actually, sorry, next week will be Up and Vanish. We can't do them back to back like that. We're only going to be able to record one more tonight. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're excited to do those. We might be making a habit of it as well. We might even do some for uh, Life After and... Uh, the message as well if, if the the two bonus podcasts of surreal and up and manage go well so just let us know okay so i got a new toy mikey i gotta show you so here it is this is the mac book pro i uh found it on bh photo this is actually technically used but i think it was like a return i think they got it within the 30-day return policy and it was i think it was just basically used um and basically um what happened was I wasn't planning on getting a new computer, but this podcast was killing my MacBook Air. And actually, I'm using the MacBook Air just so I could show you that right now. Um, but uh, And uh, it was absolutely killing it. So it was being really frustrating. Like I would, it literally take me four times as long as it was supposed to edit because of how much this computer was choking on the podcast specifically. But what was really cool about the MacBook Air, and a lot of people don't know this, you can edit, and this is a 2014 MacBook Air, by the way. It's not even a new one. It only has four gigs of RAM. Uh, you can actually edit 4K videos. I've edited as much as uh, videos that were 20 minutes long, 4K, with relative ease. It did have some slowdowns here and there, but I was really impressed uh, with the MacBook Air. But when you get to lengthy stuff, and even though we were not even recording in 4K, uh, it just it was terrible. It was chugging like terribly, so... I just felt like to keep my sanity, I needed to upgrade. And also, I really wanted to upgrade. So that there's also that. Anyway, I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's a really nice computer. You want to see how big this trackpad is? Check this out. Look how big that is. Goodness. What do you mean? It's like as big as my Look how it's like as big as my face. <laughs> it's, it's as big and he's as got my a face. big head, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I do. And uh, it's <laughs> okay, also got okay. uh, a fingerprint sensor. Oh, I didn't know it was it's got the touch bar thing, so it's got that little touch bar at the top. Nice. I don't even know if you can see that over there, but uh, anyway, it's it did it's pretty sweet, and it's the 2016 version. I found a really good deal on BH Photo. It was like eighty-seven or eight hundred dollars off, and then if you got it used, it was another three hundred dollars off. So if I bought a new version with this configuration, it would have been like almost a thousand dollars more. And I also had to get one of these things. Do you know what this is, Mikey? Oh yeah, this is can't um, live without it. Yeah, this is the frustrating thing about Apple. In fact, I actually complained about Apple in the most recent video, but they decided to go to straight to USB-C, so all the ports are now just USB-C. And so you have four on, the two on this side and two on this side. And so to actually get real, like real ports, you have to plug in this thing into it to get an SD card slot because I need that for getting stuff off my computer, micro SD and USB, whatever. Now, anyway, I'll, it's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you, um, for me, uh, you know, a lot of people complain about them switching to USB C, but for me, it was actually the opposite of a problem. Um, one of the things Apple and a lot of other companies have always done is, especially Apple, is made pr proprietary connectors to where you have to buy something from them or um, a third party company that is licensed to make stuff for them to actually be able to plug it in. I mean, you go back to the original iPod connector or the lightning connector. Um, for me, this is one step in the right direction because USB-C is the future. Um, and it's something that yeah. universally everybody can use and can make it work with every type of specification with uh, video, with, I mean, with everything. You can connect monitors to USB-C. Uh, I don't know, it, cause it can also transfer video and power at the same time. To me, I get everyone's frustration because, you know, you have to have these adapters. But the reality is, is it's a step in the right direction. It's just nobody likes change because they've already bought all these other gadgets to go with, you know, regular USB plugins or whatnot. So it could be frustrating, but in the long run, it's a good move. Yeah, I get that. Um, the thing is, is like, how long do you really own a computer for? That's where I'm kind of like, yeah, but I'm not surprised. Apple does this kind of stuff all the time. So... Yeah, it is future proofing it, but there's no such thing as a future proof computer. So I don't know. It, it feels a little early to me, but at least they kept the headphone jack. You can't say that for their phones. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
they do have that. I would have been like, oh, you got to be kidding me if I got rid of the headphone jack. <laughs> I'm like, no. I uh, Actually, that brings me to the next stuff we're going to talk about. I got two comments. So about a week ago, uh, I released a video uh, on um, the uh, Bluetooth headphones. It was the uh, Teotronic Bluetooth headphones versus the Jaybird uh, Freedoms. Um, Mike, did you get a chance to see that by chance? I did, and I really enjoyed that video. Um, did you? Well, yeah, it actually inspired me, wanted me to, made me want to get some headphones. Um, I actually, after looking at those headphones, um, I found some by Anchor, uh, the Anchor SoundBud Slim Plus. And now these headphones have actually been recommended um, by a lot of the viewers on, not viewers, um, uh, I guess readers on Lifehacker. Because uh, every now and then mm. Lifehacker will send out things, you know, what are your favorite earbuds or whatever. And this was actually recommended by a lot of people. And they're about the same price mm. point. Uh, they're about the the newest version, which is the Slim Plus, is $30. Um, but for me, you know, when it comes to Anchor versus Teotronics, I know a lot more from Anchor. Uh, so I originally thought about getting the Teotronics because, you know me, I don't like spending, you know, $100 plus dollars on some headphones that one of my kids is going to get a hold of and break. And then when you talk about them being the same sound quality, it's like, why spend that mu- extra money for no reason? And when they don't even look as comfortable. Yeah. And that was, that was kind of the interesting conclusion of that. And I actually, even if it's hard to say, cause I keep thinking like, would I have bought the Teotronics if they were the same price? And that's kind of where I'm like, Hmm, I'm not sure. It, because I mean, I do trust the name of Jay Berg more than Teotronics. I've never heard of Teotronics other than that headphone. And actually I did look at anchor, earbuds when I was trying to look for ones to compare it with and at the time the Cheotronics were more highly rated um, than they are now they're still really highly rated but they were like best selling on like several of the top selling spots so I was like well this one's super popular so I'm gonna go for that since then they're not the best selling anymore uh, but I, I was definitely tempted to go anchor so I don't blame you because I have actually had good experiences with anchor products as well and they, they tend to be like really good value products but we got some comments um on that video so I want to read these real quick so once once a uh, great review actually th- both these comments really surprised me I only got th- got a couple and two of the, two of the couple comments I got two of the comments really surprised me so one says uh this one from Rick Kelly it says great review I purchased the Beats X for my Max Trainer M7 purchased after watching your reviews uh, they have the same flat cable as your bargain uh, earbuds and work great for only $125 more and he did the thumbs down. Wish your review came out two months ago. I recently purchased Apple AirPods and use for everything else. You should review a truly wireless earbud, a whole new level of wireless freedom, and while looking like a cyborg dork. <laughs> Keep up the great reviews. Really nice comment there. Uh, next one's from Jack Death. Death? It's not spelled with an A, though. It's D-E-T-H. So Jack Death. I guess. I don't know how you say that. Uh, great video. Still enjoy how you tell the reviews. Sense of humor is right on. The headphones for $25 look good. Have you used them while using the Max Trainer? Are you sensing a pattern here? <laughs> <laughs> Mikey. Uh, that would seem to be a good test for both headphones. Uh, have to say that the Bluetooth seems to be a great option. Having the cord attached can be a pain at times. And like you stated, having another device to charge is a pain too. Just another choice to make. Keep up the great videos. So... I find it amazing. I keep getting comments from people that are like, hey, nice camera review. You still using the Max Trainer? I came, it's amazing to me like how many of these people, I guess, subscribed and just keep coming back. And I haven't made a video about a Mac, the Max Trainer in a long time. I still love the product. It's great. I have it. It's right there. I'm looking at see, it. See, <laughs> see, that's what I wonder. Did they, did they love that video and that's what led them to the channel? Or do they just like feel like you need to work out? Like, I don't, are they trying to tell you something here? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, as, as one of your best friends here, man, I gotta say, like, it's, it's making me nervous. I don't know if like this is like a, hey, by the way, just to let you know, don't forget to work out. <laughs> you know, it was actually funny on one of my videos, they said, dang, you're fat. I'm not joking. So I was like really confused. It was totally out of left field. I don't even know what video it was on. And I was like, what? Hmm. <laughs> and I was like, now that you've said that, maybe that's what it was. They saw the Max Trainer stuff. They're like, that guy is not practicing what he preaches. Now, he now is... let me point out here. I mean, like, Titus is not a big guy. So that's why I find that really interesting. Like, he's not like, he's not the guy that walks in the room. You're like, oh, oh okay. He's a big guy. Like, I mean, he's he's an average build guy here. Um, Yeah, you should, you should see a picture of me. Well, you knew me when I was really big. I, I about, 
I don't know how many years ago it was. I was like about 40, 50 pounds heavier than I am now. So I, I, I was a pretty big guy at one point, but I I didn't think I was really fat enough to, to call that, but, to, to see, merit the, that comment. That's the thing. Even, like, even when you were at your, you know, your biggest, I still feel like you weren't even like, a, you weren't that guy that walks in the room. You're like, oh, wow, watch out. Like, he's a big guy. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I you never, like, you never were that big that, like, it was viewed as an outside problem. Like, hey, we need to say something to him. I never, you know what I'm saying? Like. I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't even know if you want to include this. <laughs> no, I would love to include this. <laughs> we'll see. Actually, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I just I find it so interesting that these people. I mean, I need to make another video about the Max Trainer. I need to throw these people a bone because clearly they want more up from the Max Trainer. In fact, I even shot an entire video where I worked out on the Max Trainer for a week. You were actually in town when I was recording yes, this one. Was. I never released it though. Yeah, you never I got did, behind. Huh? Well, I started doing like review more reviews, and I was like, "This isn't really the type of style of video I make anymore." And I just kind of was like, "Eh." And even though it would have probably done really great because every Bowflex video I've ever done does really well, maybe I was just maybe for these videos, like how like with these headphones, like to really show them off, maybe do a little test trial, showing you working out with those headphones on. Like you would... know, I will do that from now on. I'm definitely, every headphone video I ever do, I'm going to have to comment on, just for the Bowflex people. This is just for you people who watch uh, my other videos, because literally I haven't done it in months, and these people keep coming back, and uh, and I love it. I, I think it's really it's really cool that these people definitely. have just, uh, they seem to be a really tight-knit group. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, because you spend a lot of money on it, so you're definitely like drinking the Kool-Aid if you buy one of those things. But they're great, and I think they merit the, the community that's built around them. So, um, But I definitely thank you guys. Thank you, Jack Deeth, or Jack Death. I don't know how to say that. And Rick Kelly for the kind comments. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and I think I, did, I answered your question on the... So someone asked or if it was good for the Bowflex. Yes, I bought these specifically with the Bowflex and working out in mind. I really only use Bluetooth headphones when I'm working out because I find that that is like the best solution and also if you use them more than that then you have to charge them every day and i don't like charging them every day so if you work you only use it when you work out then you'll have to charge them every couple days to every week or something so anything else you want to say man you want to end this one i think that's it um it's been a great podcast uh, i think we covered a lot of great subjects here if you guys have any questions or comments please leave them for us what was the email again? Yeah, I always forget to plug the email. <laughs> Literally, no one's ever, e- no one's emailed me. So uh, I would, it would mean a lot to me if you would just email me. Can you just uh, test it and make sure the email works? Yes, please. In and fact, not, yeah. And if you email us and you don't hear anything about it, leave a reply corner of our YouTube videos letting us know, hey, I emailed you idiots and you never replied. So <laughs> I thanks would love for that, that actually. That, like, yeah, for real, like fact, let us know that we're the idiots that are screwing it up or whatever. Because we want to hear from you guys. We want to know what you have to say. I feel like that's crucial. Absolutely. We don't want to just sit, continue to sit here and spit out information. And you guys are like, oh, I would really like this, but you guys screw this up. You know, I mean, that's, I feel like that's crucial. Yeah. We want to make content that people enjoy. Absolutely. So it is podcast at the search for awesome dot co podcast at the search for awesome dot co dot C O so, not com dot C O. Yes, I made that mistake many a times. People, I think, keep emailing that one, but I would never know. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, just uh, drop me, a, drop us a line, give us some feedback. If you have anything you want to talk about on the show, let us know. Help us shape the show. This is a show we want people to enjoy. So uh, if there's anything we can do or change, just let us know, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you, guys, and we will see you next time.